Hello everyone. Today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles is so simple, even an average Christian, that is to say, anyone who has a pretty good grasp of the Bible can clearly understand it. However, simple as it is, it gives a powerful message to all Christians. The writer, Luke, talks about the life of the early Christian community particularly the four elements that form the fundamental structure of your Christian community or family. He says, The community of believers devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. First, the early Christians devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. What did the apostles teach? Of course, they taught about Jesus. However, at that time there was not any New Testament book as we have today which teaches us about Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, the letter of Paul to the Galatians written around 48 or 49 AD is widely considered to be the earliest book of the New Testament. So the apostles used only their available sources, the Jewish scriptures or the Old Testament written on the scrolls mainly in Hebrew to speak about Jesus. And also they transmitted orally the many things that Jesus had taught them and told them to pass on to others. There were also no buildings or churches yet for them to gather and pray and preach the gospel of Jesus. As the apostles preached in marketplaces, street corners and homes, people gathered round at their feet, listening to them and memorizing and meditating upon all the words and acts of Jesus. The most significant thing was that not only did the apostles desire to instruct all people in the word of God, but also the people wanted to hear God's word. Friends, have you come here today eagerly to hear the word of God? Are you expecting God to speak to your heart today? How eager are you to read the scriptures? Jesus says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for whatever you please and you will get it. Yes, it is very important that we love the scriptures. But knowing and reading the Bible alone is not enough. Blessings come from delighting in it, meditating upon it, and living by it. Therefore, let us eagerly read and listen to it whenever we have an opportunity to do so, and gladly heed its warnings and admonitions in order to obtain the promise of Him abiding in us and us in Him. Even lost people desiring salvation turn to the Word of God. If we who have been already baptized in his name and seek to find God in the scriptures with an earnest heart, the Holy Spirit will surely reveal him to us. Second, the early Christians devoted themselves to the communal life. What does that mean? Communal life means to be everything to and for others and sharing with one another. The Greek word that Luke uses in this context is koinonia, the unity of hearts. He says, all who believed were together and held all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. That is to say, the unity of the early Christian community was not only visible in their regular gatherings for worship and prayers, but also in the care and concern that they extended to the neediest members of the community. Paul in his second letter to the Corinthians chapter 8 testifies to the generosity of the early Christians in Macedonia. Throughout continual ordeals of hardship, their unfailing joy and, and their intense poverty have overflowed in wealth of generosity on their part. I can testify that it was of their own accord that they made their gift, which was not merely as far as their resources would allow, 
but well beyond their resources. First, we are reminded of the wonderful truth that one does not have to have a lot to be able to give, but rather the desire to give that matters. An example of this we read in the Gospel of Mark chapter 12 of a woman who gives only two copper coins, but like the Macedonians, she gives out of her poverty. Second, sometimes one should be even willing to be deprived so others could benefit. Friends, if you are one of those faithful Christians who share your money and things with the needy, both within and outside the church, please continue to do so cheerfully from the heart. Third, the early Christians devoted themselves to the breaking of bread. In the New Testament breaking of bread refers to the Holy Eucharist or the Lord's Supper and to eating an ordinary meal. In each of these instances, the people thanked God before the bread was broken and the meal eaten. For instance, Jesus gave thanks to God before he multiplied the loaves and fishes. During the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples. So also Luke says, every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God. The breaking of bread in the early Christian community was thus associated with a prayer of thanksgiving and sharing and enjoying the blessings of God. Friends, when we take part in the celebration of the Holy Eucharist, let us first and foremost thank the Lord Jesus Christ for His presence among us through the sacrament and His Church. Let us also thank God always for the daily bread. Meals are an important time to realize how blessed we are to have enough to eat and so give God thanks. St. Paul in his letter to the Romans chapter 14 says, The one who eats freely eats in honor of the Lord, making his thanksgiving to God. And the one who does not abstains from eating in honor of the Lord and from making his thanksgiving to God. Friends, a grateful heart enables us to be at peace with Christ and with one another. Fourth, the early Christians devoted themselves to prayer. They were persistent and consistent in their prayer. There were instances of places where they were praying and worshipping, being shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. It means God was there, that he both heard and answered their prayers. It means he filled them again with his Holy Spirit. Friends, when we sit in prayer or go to church to pray and worship, let us not focus on ourselves, our feelings, our likes and dislikes, small inconveniences and discomforts, but rather on God in order for us to experience Him deeply and intimately. Friends, let us read, hear, love and rejoice in the Word of God. Let us share our things with those in need. Let us thank and praise God for all the gifts. Let us pray and worship Him with all our heart, mind, body and soul. Amen. God bless you.